I'm in the city of Antwerp, the largest municipality in Belgium, with more than half a million inhabitants. Here, the local public transport is centred not around trains, but rather an underground tramway, a transportation system known as a pre-metro. Many cities today are serviced by dedicated train systems that are typically run underground through already established urban centres, known as a metro or metropolitan network. However, the cost of a metro and its heavy rail fleet can be expensive and can be otherwise limited by the overall capacity required of a city's population. That is where a pre-metro system comes in as a potential alternative. A pre-metro is one that provides a light rail alternative, utilising trams. The system is commonly run in the underground tunnels and infrastructure expected of heavy rail, with an intention to change over the system at a later date when warranted. Following the Second World War and the growing uptake of the private vehicle, traffic congestion within cities was rising. Post-war redevelopment saw some cities introduce bus routes where others looked to provide tramways alongside road traffic, with both of these outcomes not necessarily improving overall road congestion. In the 1960s, new transit models, including the original German Stadtbahn, were starting to be tested, where public transport was removed from the roadway that moved trams underground within the city and with suburban areas possibly ran at surface level on a dedicated path. In fact, the idea of providing tunnels below the roadway to reduce congestion is nothing new, with the Marseille tramway first in 1893 providing a tunnel for horse-drawn carriages below its centre. These new systems of the 20th century, however, had the additional potential in its design to later convert into heavy rail. Pre-metro systems would be taken up across numerous urban areas, most notably in Belgium, where in 1958 the capital of Brussels completed a short tunnel for its tramway to avoid a busy intersection above. And by 1963 would form public transport working groups in its five larger cities to roll out larger systems. Throughout the 1970s, Brussels would continue to divert its tramway through a series of tunnels that they could later convert into a metro. For now, however, they would develop a pre-metro. The first major works in Brussels were completed in December 1969 between De Brucke and Schumann, a section that was later transferred to heavy rail in 1976. Pre-metro tramways were subsequently built along a north-south axis and a greater and small ring around the central area. By the end of the 20th century, the city would prioritise its funding to the conversion of its system into heavy rail, alongside new bus services. The city is now actively converting the north-south axis that runs under the old town. However, the original 1958 tunnel does not meet the requirements of heavy rail, which has required a new section of track along with a new station. And whilst former pre-metro lines are being converted, the city has also continued to develop its surface tram network, with many of these lines provided to pre-metro specifications. Here in Antwerp, its pre-metro system has developed to a different outcome, with trams remaining a key part of its public transport infrastructure. Following the first successful projects in Brussels, the city of Antwerp would develop its pre-metro system in the 1970s. An original design for nearly 15 kilometres of track and 22 stations would commence, the first 1.3 kilometre section would be complete in March of 1975. However, by the mid-1970s, the city of Antwerp was already questioning the feasibility of conversion. Later stations were developed with shorter platforms for trams and not the full 90 metre type that would be required of a metro. Issues with funding would eventually force construction to come to a stop. With tunnelling mostly complete, not all stations would be built and seven would be mostly complete but remain unopened. Parts of the network would continue in disuse until the release of the 2004 Pegasus plan that looked to open the remaining sections as a pre-metro, eventually opening the Ziegel station in 2015. Today the Antwerp pre-metro has more than 11 kilometres of operational track and is serviced by 12 stops with a plan to open even more of the unfinished stations. Unlike Brussels, the city has separately developed an extensive surface tramway network. A pre-metro was developed here in Vienna also, with underground tramways constructed within the Austrian capital in the 1960s. 
The first lines would be converted in the 1980s, with platforms raised to meet the requirements of heavy rail. Further lines have been retained as a pre-metro, however have been refurbished to visually align with the metro station design. The outcome of pre-metro systems has had varying success around the world, primarily tied to its cost of conversion. Buenos Aires in Argentina has replaced much of its planned pre-metro with a metro bus system, providing dedicated bus lanes and stations. And many cities have looked to other models including train tram, also popularised in Germany, where vehicles already meet the requirements of mainline rail for greater speeds. Other lower density cities have embraced surface level tramways without the ability of conversion. The pre-metro has allowed cities like Brussels to develop a metro, and cities like Antwerp to retain a functioning light rail system. However, with many cities looking to develop to more proven models, the pre-metro remains an anomaly in our city's public transport options.